Hey, good morning, folks. Uh, it's good to be with you uh, digitally. This is kind of a new experiment that we're doing here at KFC. Uh, if you were on uh, earlier on our children's page, uh, Pastor Missy brought a great message uh, to our kids. Um, and uh, actually, my kids watched it on the way in uh, here this morning. So it's very odd being here and preaching to three people. <laughs> so if you're wondering who's, who's here with us, uh, my wife Angela is here with us and, and Pastor Missy and then, and then Keith is manning the technical stuff. So if something goes wrong, it's his fault. So I <laughs> just wanted to clarify all that, you know, but it's good to be here with you. Um, uh, feel free because this is a Facebook Live, you can make comments and then we can hop back in later and, and we can talk that way if you'd like. Uh, after this uh, video, this live is finished, um, we're going to then upload this particular video to, fa or to, to YouTube, to our YouTube page. And our church has a YouTube page. So if you go to our website, www.kfcnaz.com, you can access both this page, which you're already on, you don't really need to do that, or you can access our YouTube page as well. But you might also want to keep that church uh, website open because up in the top right hand corner there's this little bitty button and it says give now and I want to encourage you we're not here to continue passing the plates and so uh, if, if you have the ability uh, I don't want to I don't want to try to strong arm you or force you that's not what we're doing but folks uh, churches depend on those Sunday morning offerings uh, and so I want to encourage you in this time of crisis uh, don't become so inward focused, even with our finances. Let's continue to be generous in all that we do. Uh, so you have a couple options. Uh, we have that give now. Uh, you can even put it into a check, which is one of the, an ancient, ancient form of money. Drop an envelope, uh, write the address, uh, Kissimmee First Church of the Nazarene, 1550 Mill Slough Road, Kissimmee, Florida, uh, zip code is 34744 and mail it. I feel like a televangelist. This is like making me feel icky talking about all this stuff right here. If you just send us a check. No, <laughs> so, uh, no but uh, I want to encourage you. Um, uh, that's one way we can continue to maintain community. Our homeless ministry uh, still went out yesterday. It was a small bare bones crew because we want to continue to follow the CDC guidelines and all that we do. But they still went out and ministered. So I want you to know that even though we're not gathering here on Sunday morning, the church business, the function of ministry is still happening. And so we rely on those gifts, on those tithes and offerings from you. And I want you to know that we appreciate you so much um, in, in all of those areas. So just as a heads up, before we dig into some of the sermon, if you want to go ahead and open your Bibles, you can and get ready. Uh, turn to Psalms chapter 46. Uh, in my Bible, it's page 481. I don't know if that's going to help you or not, but uh, it helps me. Um, and none of y'all are here, so it's okay. But um, if you, uh, while you're turning to your scripture, I want to give you just a couple of updates on what's happening. Because we're going to continue to follow the guidelines given to us uh, by the CDC uh, and, and by our government, by our president and our leaders, uh, that means uh, for this Sunday, of course, and next Sunday, uh, including the Wednesday and activities in between this week, uh, we're not going to be meeting here at the church. Um, we are, though, going to utilize some more technology, uh, and between now and Wednesday, uh, you're going to get some instructions, some directions on how to use a program called Zoom, Z-O-O-M. If you want, you can download it free on your phone, you can download it on your tablet, on your computer, uh, and it's going to be a video conferencing app that we're going to use uh, to continue to stay in community, uh, to have Bible study together, uh, uh, and to conduct business. So I want, to, I want you to check out uh, the app Zoom, Z-O-O-M. Uh, again, phone, tablet, uh, or computer. Um, and if you don't want to be on camera, that's okay. You can turn the camera part off uh, and just listen in and talk that way. Um, I can still see who's on. It'll let me know by phone number or by name if you register that way. Um, it's free. It doesn't charge you, it doesn't cost you a thing, um, but it's a way that we can stay connected uh, and, and work through those things. Um, 
I want you to know that, that we're still functioning. Uh, things are still going on. Uh, it looks really, really different. Uh, it looks and feels weird. Um, I spent yesterday uh, district meetings, uh, admissions, uh, district advisory council, making plans for the future, what's going to be happening, what's going to be taking place. Uh, and there's going to be some major challenges. But folks, one of the great things, when challenge happens, ingenuity takes place creativity happens and, and so i want to ask you uh, and, and encourage you to continue to be creative in ways that we uh that we overcome this social distancing thing um let's let's continue to have community but be creative about it and still continue to follow the guidelines given to us um that's i believe that's important so yeah, uh, we're going we're to continue to give you uh, updates as we get them, inform you what's going on. Um, this is looking like it could be more than just two weeks, but we don't know that yet, just yet. So we're going to just take this Sunday and next Sunday, and then we'll continue to go day by day after that on how this all works out. I want to ask you to keep praying, uh, and we're going to have a time of prayer uh, towards the end, but I want, I want you to continue to pray uh, for your brothers and your sisters. Um, some of you have uh, the church directory, uh, either via paper or by app on your phone um, and it has pictures and names it also has uh, addresses email addresses and phone numbers all of your contact is right there uh, with you and one of the great things that i've been doing I, as we were driving to the church this morning my phone lets me know uh, how much screen time i've had and my phone told me that this week my screen time was up by 35 percent uh, because that's just everything is being done digitally now um, but part of that reason, and I want you to know this, part of the reason why it was up 35% is because I'm using that app when I have a little bit of my quiet time, and I go through that church directory app, and I can look at the person, uh, I can look at the picture of the person and the name, and I pray for you every day, looking at your face, seeing your name, knowing who's in your family, and I want you to know that I'm praying for you, and that's, I want to encourage you to use that same tool as we walk through this. If there's anything right now that, that's a gift, it's we have some time. We have some time to do things that we don't normally do. Um, uh, I feel like that with all of this stuff, uh, I'm busier than ever. Um, and I've been in front of a screen so much. But we have opportunity. We have time. We've got to spend time with family uh, and be home and cook meals and do stuff. And that's really weird. We haven't eaten out in a long time. And that's been kind of nice. My, my stomach is happy about that. Uh, so uh, it's been kind of nice. Um, and the food's been really good. But, but uh, we have time to utilize. And so I want to encourage you to utilize that time as efficiently as possible. Uh, take time to pray. Take time to do Bible study. Uh, if you haven't uh, joined us yet, uh, weekdays, so Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, every morning at 8.30, uh, we have a little bit of coffee and humor and devotional time to start our day off right, uh, and then every evening at 8.30. So morning and evening, 8.30, uh, morning time, coffee, devotional, uh, some humor, uh, and then the evening time, some, some just kind of uh, coming off the day, uh, give a little bit of uh, update, some hope, uh, some prayer, and some blessing. And so I want to encourage you to join us as we do that. Again, with those videos in the same way we're doing on Sunday morning, uh, they're being streamed live on Facebook. Feel free to share this page, and you can share it right now because we're not into the sermon yet, so you're not too late. Uh, feel free to share this uh, page, share this video. Um, and then also, if you know folks that don't have face Facebook, and that's okay, they can still access um, this video on YouTube. Uh, and the link to our church's YouTube channel, which is open to anybody, it's free, uh, is on our website. And again, that's kfcnaz.com. All right. Well, enough of the commercials, enough of that stuff. Um, let's, let's, uh, let's dig into some of the word today. And that's why we're here uh, each week as we do this. Hopefully we don't have to do it too many weeks in a row. But each week as we do this, we're going to continue to look at ways to improve uh, how we have this integrated online worship. Uh, of course, there are licensing issues when it comes to music and all that kind of stuff. And so we're navigating those waters. These are brand new for us. And I'm looking to others uh, for help and advice and how we walk through it. But each week, we're going to continue to improve what we do uh, uh, for this. 
Um, but I want you to know uh, that uh, worship is an essential part. So if music is something that speaks to your soul, uh, find a radio station, find a, uh, find a Spotify channel, uh, find something that, that can speak to you, that your soul can, uh, can kind of soak up a little bit. Um, uh, spend some time uh, worshiping, and we can do that at all times of the day. It doesn't just have to be on a Sunday morning. Um, uh, but so the, the main purpose that we're here today is to spend some time connecting and breaking open his word together. And so again, I want to remind you, if you have your Bibles, your, your tablets, uh, phones, whatever, open up to the book of Psalm chapter 46. Psalm chapter 46. And as you're turning there, I want to share with you just a quick little story. And, and, and uh, we have a little bit of insight into this. But years ago, there was a mother of eight. Uh, and she had eight children. And, and she came home from doing some grocery shopping. And, and, and she found and she noticed when she walked into the house that it was, it was a little bit quieter than usual. And those of you with children, you know that when you step into the house or you come out of your room or wherever and it's quieter than usual, something's not right. <laughs> you kind of know there's something happening and, and it can really kind of be a bad sign. And, and, and so what she did, she walked into the house and she noticed it was really quiet and began to look around. And, and when she looked into the middle of the living room, she saw five of her children sitting around in a circle, very quiet, and doing something. She hadn't quite been able to see exactly what they were doing yet, but it, it seemed innocent. It seemed quiet. Okay, maybe they're just having, you know, a little powwow or something. We, she didn't quite know. But as she got lo closer and looked closer at what they were doing, all five children sitting around in this circle had baby skunks in their hand that they had found in the yard. <laughs> And, and she saw, uh, now, as cute as these little baby skunks were, we know what skunks do, right? And terrified, she began to scream, run, kids, run, get out, get out of here, run away. And, and, and what does a kid do when they hear their mom freaking out like that? They freak out. And so what happened is, is each child picked up the baby skunk that they had and began to run and scream in all five different directions all over the house. And... And, and when, you're, uh, when a kid's running and screaming, uh, something happens and their grip tightens a little bit and, and this odor begins to fill the entire house. Uh, not just in the living room, but as the kids scattered, it went everywhere. And the panic turned into not just a little bit of fear and scared, but it came, became panic and it became a pandemic for that household. And it took a long, long time for that house to go back to the way it was before that. Now, before the mom came into that house, the children were playing quietly. They were gathered together and they were still. They were calm. There had been no danger. Even though they're playing with these baby skunks, and we know what skunks do and, and that smell... We know, that's, we, we know what that is, but it was calm. It was peaceful. There was nothing to worry about. But once the mom entered into the scene and panicked, life got unpleasant really quickly. And in our text today, in, in Psalm 46, uh, we're going to see the psalmist is, is explaining kind of a, a similar setting. Uh, Israel is, is surrounded by danger. The nation is, is right in between some of the most powerful nations of the day, and, and they've got enemies on every side. And, and, and if they gave way to fear, if they gave way to panic, life could become unpleasant very, very quickly. You see, if they, if they ever gave way to fear, they begin to despair. And, and when you're despairing, that makes you weak and easy prey. For the enemies that are surrounding you. And so the focus of, of Psalm 46 really is, is this, this phrase, and I want you to hold on to this phrase, don't do that. Don't do that. See, in, in Psalm 46, uh, and if you have your Bible, we want to read it together. This is how it begins. Psalm 46 reads this way, God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. I love that phrase. 
I love that phrase, and it's repeated. I've heard some scholars say it's repeated, uh, fear not, do not fear. Uh, it's repeated like 365 times in the Bible. Uh, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. Uh, it's a nice number to think of because that means we're not supposed to fear 365 times a year, which, well, yeah. But it says in, in verse 2, Therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. <clears throat> Though its waters roar and form, and the mountains quake with their surging. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the works of the Lord, the desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That's a good word this morning. And I want you to hold on to that, that scripture, and I want you to keep that open as we walk through that. But, but the psalmist you know, says this, uh, kind of if we want to break it all down into just a simple, simple phrase, Psalm 46 is this, don't do that. Don't panic. Don't fear. Uh, he is our refuge, our strength. We will not fear. Now, I think to, for today uh, and, and this, this season that we're in. And we're going to call it a season because it will pass. I want you to give you that hope. This is a season. It will pass. All right. But that's good theology for us today. In fact, I think it's great theology because there's times when this, this no fear thing is really hard to do, like right now. Uh, you know, it was, I loved and this is the only time that you're going to hear me say this, but I loved our drive into church this morning. There was no traffic. It was wonderful. It was great. There was, it was easy, uh, like my wife shared this morning, it was easy like Sunday morning. It was fantastic. There was, it was the best drive we've had from our house to here, I think, ever. But at the same time, it was really eerie. It was really odd. It was almost scary to see the emptiness that's happening right now. Uh, and so this whole new, no fear thing, this whole don't do that can be hard to do. Now, back in the day of the psalmist, uh, when this was being penned, uh, there were lots of things to fear. And I want you to, to think about some of these things. Here, here are the things to fear. Injury, disease, death. Storms and earthquakes, droughts and famines, and of course the occasional war that would take place. Now, if I look at that list of things that they had to fear, that's really not so different than what we have today. Uh, that's really not so different at all. Um, we could say that we, we might have it better because of things like medical uh, technology and, 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 and insurance and, and uh, you know, different entities that help uh, give food and, and comfort and, and uh, well, you know, uh, just the, the, the fact that we live in this uh, wonderful country. You know, I can't imagine uh, third world countries going through this pandemic uh, like we're going through it right now. I can't imagine what that would be like. Um, so we really don't have it that bad. Yes, there are still things out there. There are still those big unknowns. But I think we need to take this Psalm 46 to heart and, and, and do not fear. For some, though, and maybe I'm talking to you right now, but, but for some, <clears throat> fear is still a very, very powerful and a very real thing in your life. And there are studies that point out uh, that, that, that today Americans are among the most stressed and fear-ridden people in the world. And honestly, as we look around at our communities and we watch the news and we hear and see what happen what's happening on social media, um, I don't think that's too far off. And so I need to ask the question, why is that? Why, why do you think that is? And, 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 and the cool thing about this online streaming is that I can ask a question and then answer it for you. 
that's really no different than what I do anyway. So, uh, so we answer, you know, we ask why. Well, because fear is a natural response to the unknown. These are days, these are things right now that we can't control. And when we can't control something, that makes us afraid. When life gets hard, when there's danger, when there's a threat to our, to our livelihood, to our finances, to our future, when we face disease, uh, uh, pandemic breakouts, all that's going on, even the most spiritual, the most godly among us can be fearful. I'm not, telling, I'm not saying that, that fear is a bad thing, but fear is, is a reality. And all of us have experienced it one time or another in one form or another. And when fear grabs hold of us, we can become anxious, uh, very anxious and anxiety-ridden. We can become desperate and make rash and, and uh, unintelligent decisions. And we can become powerless. We become weak and powerless. When fear controls us, our lives can get pretty miserable. When fear takes hold of who we are, I can imagine our house, our, our, our house, speaking to ourselves, might be like five kids who took baby skunks and ran all the way through it, screaming and yelling and squeezing. But God tells us this, and he tells us his word, and, and, and Psalm 46 is such a great word for this this morning. He tells us this. He says, don't let that happen. Don't do that. Don't do that. Do not be afraid. God says that over and over and over. In fact, it's, you know, like I said earlier, it's one of the most repeated commands in Scripture. Don't be afraid. But how do we do that? In the midst of all that's going on, how do we not be afraid? How do we deal with fear when it seems like it's right at our doorstep? How do we, how do we walk through that? Well, as I walked through this text uh, earlier this week and, and, and then in the middle of the week and then uh, again uh, kind of into the weekend, just walking through this text verse by verse, uh, sometimes word by word, uh, the first thing that occurred to me is this. We need to recognize that, that what we fear may be very real. If we look at what's happening today, there are some very real things that's causing fear today. There's times that when we fear, it's not just made up. It's not just imaginary. It's not like going into your kid's bedroom and you hear them calling you, Mom, Dad, come in here. I think there's something in my room. And, and you look and there's nothing. Or, or maybe it's a stuffed animal that's casting an odd shadow. Or, or in our case, maybe it's uh, just an unclean room with piles of junk everywhere. I know, I'm getting a head shake for my wife, but... But, you know, and it just it creates a weird environment when the, when the boys don't clean their rooms. So boys clean your room. Um, <clears throat> but uh, it's, it's that, that's kind of an imaginary fear. What we're going through right now, and I think what we see in the text is, is that fear can be caused by very real, real things. And God knows that. God knows that it's, it's real things. And, and, but here's the thing. I, I, God is not indifferent He's not indifferent to what we struggle with. God tells us that we will face real troubles in our life. Isn't that an encouraging word today? You will face real trouble. Woohoo, fantastic. John 16, 33, in this world you will have trouble. But here's, here's the real kicker. As believers in Christ, as followers of Jesus, as those who have that label called Christian, those of us who have turned our life over to him, who've said, who've, who've said uh, Jesus, I am all in, I'm yours. Here's the, here's the kicker. This world is not our home. This is not home. If we were home with God, we'd be in heaven. And as great as this place is, this isn't heaven. In heaven, we don't have any more troubles. In heaven, there's no more fear. There's no more sorrow. There's no more death. No more crying. There's, there's no more of that. But that's not the case for where we are right now. But in this world, we will face trouble, just like everybody else. But I think we can face troubles and experience those things in different ways that the world looks at it. See, the difference is uh, we don't have to uh, succumb to some of the fears 
that others do because we have hope in Christ. Uh, I, I heard a story of a man uh, who told the time he was trying to witness to this woman about Jesus. And, and he said that she had told him that nothing in her life was working. Her daughter uh, had been killed in a car accident. Her husband was, was just mean and unfaithful to her. And she thought now that she was almost ready to, she thought she was going to be laid off. She was going to lose her job. And so when this gentleman asked her, uh, well, when the world crashes in onto you, when the world caves in, when everything falls in on you, to whom do you go? To whom do you go? And, and after a long pause, she said this. She said, I guess I just, I guess I just go to myself. And later, as the man was describing this and, and thinking about it, he said the one word that most described this woman was alone. Alone. Now, the beautiful thing about this is, is God says he's not going to let that happen to us. He'll never allow us to be alone. And so I want you to know that if you, right now in this whole social isolation, social distancing, whatever we want to call it, this being apart, if you feel alone and those feelings of uh, being alone creep in, I want you to know that's not from God. Because we see right here in his word exactly what it says. God is our refuge and strength and very and ever-present help in trouble. Folks, he's right there in the midst of our troubles. He's right there in the midst of what is going on. Or, or look at what God said in Deuteronomy 31.6. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified, for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. You know what? That promise just isn't in the Old Testament. That's also in the New Testament. In Hebrews 13.5, go ahead and look it up if you'd like. Hebrews 13.5. Why would, why would the author of Hebrews quote what's found, this promise found in Deuteronomy? Well, it's because of this. Because the same God made the same promise to us that he'd make to Israel. God's never going to leave his people. He's never going to forsake us. And just to drive that idea home, God repeats that phrase twice that we see right here in Psalm 46. Psalm 46, 7. I want you to look at that. Psalm 46, 7. The Lord Almighty is with us. You see that there? And then look down again at Psalm 46, uh, verse 11. What does it say? The Lord Almighty is with us. I think when, when God repeats himself, I, I think it's important that we, we pay attention. I think it's important that we, we maybe grab hold of that, that we look at that. God will never leave you nor forsake you. And when you have that kind of an attitude, fear cannot control you. When you hold on to that promise, fear cannot control you. Yes, you may experience fear. Yes, troubles and trials are going to come. It's going to happen. But do not let that fear take hold and control you. Now, the cool thing about this is, is there's more that jumps out of this verse. There's more. There's this really cool uh, set of verses that say this. There's a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God will help her when morning dawns. So in the midst of, of troubles, of fear, of difficulties, God not only tells us that he's going to be with us, God tells us that he's going to give us joy and gladness and refresh us. Listen to what it says. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. Well, what's this river? What's this river he's talking about? I think, looking at it and, and doing, you know, digging in, I think this river is, is God himself, the river of God. That's God. Now, back in the days of ancient Israel, when armies tried to capture cities, they'd surround it and they'd do this siege-type warfare. 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 They do this siege type warfare and they'd surround the city and, and they'd try to starve out the inhabitants. Uh, but if a city could hold off their enemies long enough and they had enough water, and really water was the key, if they had enough water 
or if there was a river that flowed through the city and they had this fresh source of water, they could never be starved out. And in fact, uh, depending on the type of river that it was or the stream that it was, it was refreshing. See, water in barrels or jars or cisterns or wells can become stale. Things that we store up for ourselves that we think could protect us, that we might use for us, uh, that stuff becomes stale. But the river of God is fresh, it's refreshing, and it's restoring. If that city had a, had a source of running water, they could last a long time. And if that water source was pure and sparkling, it not only satisfied their thirst, but it was a joy to drink from. I remember as a kid uh, on our farm uh, up in Illinois, um, the way our farm sat, we were on kind of three different counties and there was, uh, which was really cool because hunter's permits uh, were given by county and so we got hunter's permits for all three, you know, you don't care about that, that's fine. Um, but there was one area of the farm uh, that if we crossed the railroad tracks, kind of going back to the west or the east of, of where the house was, um, and we went over a couple of hills, some knolls, and, and through a short little valley. In that valley, there was a freshwater spring. Now, it wasn't this huge geyser that gushed up out of the ground. In fact, it was a little bitty hole, uh, uh, maybe about the size of one of these pallets. That's about how big the entrance was. You had to duck down and get into this hole. Uh, and back in that hole, there was a freshwater spring that sprung up that really wasn't much bigger than a water bottle that kind of came up out of the ground. It didn't shoot up big. It maybe came out of the ground that much. But that water was some of the coldest, freshest, cleanest water I've ever had. And I remember on days when, uh, especially when we'd be doing some work with the cattle and, and moving from one field to the next or one grazing area to another pasture, or maybe just pinning them in, I would specifically choose to cut through the farm that way to get back so I could pass that spring. Because I wanted a taste of that cold, cool, refreshing water. And, and, and man, it was so good. It was, it, was, it, was the, 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 it was a joy to drink from. Now, right in the middle of this psalm that we see is a really interesting command. It's a really interesting command. Look down at verse 10, not really the middle, but down at verse 10, and it says this. It says, be still and know that I am God. Amen. Now, there's really two commandments in this two parts to this command that we see. The first one is, is be still. How many times have you told your children or somebody else that phrase? Hey, be still, right? I don't think that's a phrase. I don't think that's the way God's saying it to us, though. I think he comes in as a soothing, uh, calming presence, knowing the troubles, the trials, the tribulations, the fear that we're all experiencing. He comes in and he says this. He says, hey, just, just, just be still. Just settle. Just be calm. Be quiet. Don't fuss. Don't move. Don't fidget around. Because here's the thing. Uh, when you're fidgeting, when you're, when you're moving all around, it's, 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 hard to, it's hard to get whatever's going on fixed. Um, my kids are the absolute worst about getting a splinter removed from their finger or from their toe. Holy cow. I, I've, yeah, I'm not, I've clipped dogs' toenails that were easier than removing a, a splinter out of a kid's finger. And, and, and I, I can think, I think almost every single one, it's like wrestling this, this banshee trying to hold them down to get this thing out. And, you know, so they come to you and they have this, this splinter in their finger and they're saying, it hurts, it hurts, we need to get it out, I've got a splinter. Okay, well, let me help you get it out. We'll get the tweezers, we'll get the, you know, the peroxide, make sure it's clean and stuff. Uh, and, and they'll hold still, but as soon as you get that tweezer uh, close, 
everything falls apart. And, and, and they, they, they lose it and they fuss and they cry and they squirm and they're moving and, and you can't get a grip. And, and so finally what happens is, is we'll, uh, Angela and I will kind of tag team and I'll just come in and, and you'll just kind of grab hold of the kid and hold him down, you know, and, and this stuff. And got like an, a limb sticking out just like this enough to be able to, to grab. And, you know, we're, we're holding so tight and squeezing so tight they stop breathing. No, that's not what happens. Um, <clears throat> but... It, if you, if you don't stop moving, and we've said this over and over and over again, if you don't stop moving, I can't help you. If you, don't, if, you, if, you if you can't sit still, I can't fix what's going on. And I kind of look at, at that picture with, with what God is saying. He's saying, you know what? Hey, trust me. Trust me enough to just be still. Just be still. Just be calm. I can take care of this. Just be still. And then there's, and then we look at the second part of the command. Be still and know that I am God. That word know is, is, is really a, a powerful word. That's an, that's, that's an intimate word in scripture. That's not just, you know, oh, oh yeah, I, I recognize you, you're God. That's not that. When we say that we, we know somebody, we have relationship with them. We have uh, a level of, of knowledge about who they are. And, and, and so God is telling us, he said, you know what, be still and know that I am God. Trust in who I am. I'm here for your good. I want to help you. I want to see you through this. So folks, we're in the midst of time right now that I believe God is, is speaking to us and he's saying these words, hey, you know what? You don't have to fear. I know what's going on and there are very real things out there for you to be afraid of. There are very real things for you to be, uh, that, that, that could cause anxiety, that could cause uh, frustration, that can cause doubt, that can cause fear. But God's saying, you know what? Don't do that. Don't let that control you. Don't let that be what uh, drives your life. Instead, instead, let me give you joy through it. Let me give you joy through this time. Let me give you joy and, and let you experience a refreshing presence in your life. That's what God wants to do. And then he finishes up this statement by saying, you know what, through all of it, be still, settle, be calm, and know that I am God. Trust in me. Trust in me. Folks, maybe we need to spend some more time getting to know who God is. Maybe we need to take this opportunity uh, uh, to dig into his word a little bit more. Maybe we need to take this time to, to spend some time praying more. There's a story, and I want to close with this story. There's a, there's a story of a woman named Gladys. And Gladys was a, was a missionary to China uh, who oversaw an orphanage uh, of Chinese children. And during the early days of, of World War II, the Japanese army began to invade uh, the area that she was working in this orphanage and, and overseeing this orphanage. And, and she and the children and the staff were forced to flee for her life. Well, as they got ready to leave, all of her staff left except for one person. And so it was left with, with Gladys and this one helper to lead more than 100 orphaned children over the mountains to freedom and to safety. You ever noticed how much food a kid can eat? <laughs> we have this week. <laughs> well, Gladys had over 100 children. She had over 100 kids to, to care for, and, and they didn't have many supplies when they left the orphanage. And, and the enormity of her responsibility was so hard on Gladys that she began to struggle with, with fear and with despair in her life. And at one point after, after laying awake all night, having a sleepless night, she faced the morning with the belief that they had no hope of ever reaching safety, of ever reaching a place where they could be uh, uh, safe. 
Well, just then, one of the one of the fourteen year old girls in the group uh, reminded her of the much loved story uh, of Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. And Gladys said, after hearing the story, and this girl recount the story to her. Gladys said, "But, but I'm not Moses." And the girl said, "Of course you're not. But God is still God." God is still God. Here's the deal. As we walk through all this mess today, as we walk through all this junk uh, today in the, in the coming weeks and months, because we don't know how long this is going to be going on, I want to remind you that, that you're not Moses. I want to remind you that, that you're not Esther or Daniel or Shadrach or Meshach or Abednego or, or any other of the great heroes and, uh, and heroines in, in the Old Testament But I want you to know that you serve the same God. They weren't any different than you are. The only only advantage was that when life got hard and became overwhelming, do you know what they did? They were still. They were still. And they knew who God was. They trusted in him. They believed in him. They leaned hard on who he was. And folks, that's, that's the promise that I want to leave you with today. Be still and know that I am God. Don't let fear control you. Don't let it consume you and change who you are. Instead, I want you to continue to, to trust in his word. Trust in the hope of who he is. And folks, he's going to see us through this. He's going to... He, he's going to I believe we're going to come out on the other side of this uh, uh, stronger than, the, than we ever were before. God's going to walk, walk, us, walk us through this mess. He's going to walk us through this. We're going to come out uh, stronger. Uh, folks, don't give in to fear. Don't give in to that stuff. Because God is still God. And he's in control. I want to pray with you this morning as we get ready to close. Um, And I want to ask, if you would, would you continue to pray for our leaders? Uh, Pray for our elected leaders, our president, our vice president, those uh, in his staff. I want you to pray for uh, those on the front lines, especially doctors, nurses, EMTs, paramedics, those folks who, who are not practicing social distancing right now for your safety. If you would, would you cry out every single morning and every single night for God's protection on them? I want you to pray for those that are, that are touched uh, by this disease, by this virus. And when I say touched, I don't mean they haven't just contracted it, but, but, but the touch goes much further. I, if you would, I want you to pray for those who are working uh, through financial difficulties. Um, because that's a very real thing that we're going to be facing. Be praying for those in the financial industry that they would come up with with, uh, ideas and ways to help stimulate the economy and see us through all of this. And then I want you to be praying that God would give you creative, imaginative, brand new ways to continue to be the church even though we're not gathered here in this place. He wants to use you. You are, you are a gift. You are a blessing. You are uh, a masterpiece created by him. And so I want to encourage you. Be praying that God would give you fresh new ideas to continue to be the church in this day. Because, folks, people need to see the church. They need to see you because you are the church. I'm going to ask if you would, uh, if you want to gather with your family right where you are, if you're with some friends, uh, take just a moment and, and uh, we're going to bow our heads and, and we're, going to, we're going to pray. If you want to stare at the screen, you can, but you're not going to see anything special. <laughs> so we want, to, we want to pray together as we close this time. And as we get ready to pray, if some of you are watching right now and maybe you don't have that hope, maybe you don't have that relationship with Jesus just yet. I want to tell you, it's as simple as doing three things. First is admitting who we are, admitting that maybe I'm not in the right place that I should be. And then it's, it's believing who God is. I believe God in, in your power. I believe in your presence. I believe you sent Jesus to save us, to give salvation.
And then it's the C, ABC, confessing. I'm not telling you to go find a box to, and, and, and speak through a hole to somebody else on the other side. We're not talking about a confessional. But I'm talking about confessing your inadequacies, inadequacies to God. Confess. God, I'm sorry. I messed up. But I want to be different. I want to change. I want to be better. I don't want to deal with this fear, with this anxiety, with this junk in my life from all that's going on. And folks, we have a promise. We just shared it. He is our refuge and our strength, our ever-present help in trouble. He will see you through it. And he won't just see you through it. He will see you through it with joy. He'll walk with you and guide you and direct you. And so as we pray today, if you need to pray those words, if you need to do the ABCs, admitting, believing, and confessing, or maybe you just need to, to let go of some of that fear and anxiety that you're facing today, I want to encourage you to do that right now. And folks, I want you to know, if you ever need anything or you want to chat or talk or uh, vent, uh, know that I'm there for you. Our, our, our pastoral team, uh, Pastor Missy and, and Mike and, and, and Judy in the office, we're available for you via email and phone and text and how that works. And, and uh, know that we love you and that we appreciate you and that we care about you. If there are things going on in your life that you need prayer, that you want to talk, uh, let us know. We're there for you. All right? Let's pray together as we finish our time here this morning. Jesus, we love you today. And Father, the only way uh, that we can say that phrase is because you first loved us. Jesus, we thank you for that mighty and powerful and amazing love. We thank you for who you are for being creator God, for being uh, the God that sustains life, the God that, that, uh, that, that can heal and that can restore. And Father, we believe in that. We trust in that. And so Father, we pray for that right now. God, would you begin to heal those that are touched, that are affected by this virus? And Father, beyond just the virus, would you begin to heal and touch and restore those who are affected and hurt by fear right now? God, we ask that you would lead and guide and direct our, uh, our leaders, our president, our vice president, those in his staff, uh, those working with the medical field, uh, the CDC, the WHO, all these different groups trying to work together to find an answer, to figure out how to curb this thing, how to work through it. Father, I pray for our, our, our local and municipal leaders as they're trying to make decisions on a local level right here because it affects us in very real ways. And they, uh, Father, I pray that they'd be sensitive uh, to your voice, to your leading. And Father, we want to pray, we want to lift up those who are on the front lines. The doctors, the nurses, the, the staff in the hospitals and in the clinics. We think about the first responders, the ambulance drivers, the EMT, the firefighters, our police. Uh, all of those folks who are on the front line who aren't practicing that social distance right now uh, for, for our own good, for our benefit. Not for theirs, but for us. And so, Father, I pray right now, would you pour out an extra dose of blessing? Would you wrap your arms of protection around them right now, this very instant? Would you allow them to feel your presence? And now, Father, as we move ahead in these days, would you help us be creative? Would you help us be inventive in how we do ministry? Would you give us fresh new ideas? Would you fill us up with your presence so that those that we come in contact with, we have an opportunity to spread and share the good news of who you are and to share and speak hope into somebody's life who desperately needs to hear it. Now, fathers, we finish our time here together and we go about the rest of our day. I pray that we would do that in your presence that you would be with us, that you would lead us, that you would guide us and direct us in all things. Now, Father, through all things, through all the mountaintop experiences and the valleys and all that's in between, we give you all honor and glory and praise. And Jesus, we thank you and we praise you for who you are. We ask all these things in the, in the precious and the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. And amen. amen. 
Now, uh, most of you all know we have to finish with one thing, and we want you to know that, that the blessing is important, and know that, that we love you, that we appreciate you. Uh, and so here is our blessing today, and it comes from the same scripture that we've been in this morning. And so if you would, let's hold our hands out. I know we're in different areas all over the place. Let's hold our hands out this morning and receive his blessing. This is what God says. Be still and know that I am God. Be blessed in who he is. Love you. Appreciate y'all. We'll see you again.